Is it possible to end global poverty by tomorrow? Well, why that, why that sounds like a, a romantic U2 song from the 80s or a, a, a naive hippie claim from the 70s, let's end poverty by tomorrow, right? I, I want to show you in very few minutes that it's absolutely possible to end global poverty by tomorrow. So the World Bank says that 20% of the people in the world live in extreme poverty with less than $1.25 per day. There are 7 billion people in the world in 2015, that's, that's the benchmark for my calculation, so we have 1.4 billion people uh, live in extreme poverty. And then the World Bank says there are another 20% of people in the world that live in poverty. So they live between $1.25 and $2, and $2.25 per day. So that's another 7 billion times 20%, another 1.4 billion people. Now, if we would give each one of them an additional dollar per day, we could lift them over the respective poverty lines, right? They would have more than $2 a day, they would be lifted out of poverty. So this wouldn't work like giving them a dollar and say, that, here you go, got an additional dollar. It, it would be like we take the money and we would invest it into infrastructure, into health, into educational infrastructure in these countries. The equivalent, accountants wise, it will still get to them and accountant wise, lift them over the poverty level. So how much would we need to do that? 1.4 billion plus 1.4 billion times 365 days a year, we would need about a trillion dollar, $1,000 billion per year. So let's look at some of the potential sources, some of the orders of magnitudes that we have in this world. For example, foreign exchange markets. These are the global financial markets for trading currencies, just exchanging between different currencies. That's an annual turnover of $2 million billion. So our $1,000 billion is the equivalent of 0 0.0005 or the equivalent of 0.05%. That's half of a tenth of a percent. So that's $1 out of every $2,000. There's one very famous idea from a Nobel Prize winning economist, James Tobin, who said, well, the idea is very simple that he had back then in the 70s. He said, at each exchange of a currency into another, a small tax would be levied. He proposed 0.5% of the volume of the transaction. Actually, he proposed it to dissuade speculators. He said that would be a very good thing because speculators, they just create these bubbles. So we would levy a, a tax of 0.5%. Now we would need 10 times less than that, 0.05%. And we would permanently collect enough money if we would invest that into global education and health to lift permanently the world out of poverty. Now, well, there are many other ways this can be done. For example, there's a lot of talk about global inequality, income inequality, and the 1% and that they have so much money. So let's look how much money we have with the richest people on planet Earth. So there are, in 2013, there were 15 million millionaires in the world, millionaires in terms of their incomes, so excluding their homes, so not what they possess. Many people possess very expensive homes, but you take that off and just see who gets a million dollars per year of income. And you have 15 million people in the world that, that, that have that in 2013. And then you have 100,000 multimillionaires. That means people who earn more than $30 million per year. And you have about 1,000 multi-billionaires, people who earn more than $2 billion a year. So if we stay very conservative and sum that up and we say, well, we have 15 billion dollars from the millionaires, then from the multimillionaires, they say more than 30 million, some have 50, 60, 70, but let's stay conservative and say they would earn exactly 30 million, so we get 3 billion, and also staying conservative with our multi-billionaires, there are several who earn significantly more than 2 billion a year, but uh, let's stay at the 2 billion, we had a, have another 2,000 billion, so in total we would have global income of these super rich of 20 billion, 20,000 billion dollars per year. Now the trillion dollars that we need to end poverty is the equivalent of 5% of that. That means if you would just say, you know, everybody earns more than a million dollars per year, has an additional 5% 
solidarity tax to end poverty, we could have the permanent income to end poverty uh, by tomorrow. We would invest this equivalent into global health and global education and so forth. Now, let me be very clear. I'm not suggesting that we should do exactly that. I'm not suggesting that we should absolutely levy a tax on current uh, on foreign exchange and or that we should put a 5% tax on global millionaires and multimillionaires. I'm not saying that we should do that. I'm just telling you it's completely a myth that we don't have the money to end poverty by tomorrow. If you would do either the one or the other, nobody would seriously get hurt. Really, nobody would get hurt. Even if multimillionaires have a 5% additional tax, they would not get hurt, completely in contrary to the 2.8 billion people that live with less than $2 a day. They do get hurt every day. And it is technically, according to the numbers, completely possible to end poverty by tomorrow as we define poverty right now. It's just a question of political will, not a question of not having the money.